and welcome to Leaders of Tomorrow, India's only daily television platform for small businesses. Many months into the coronavirus pandemic, connectivity challenges globally continue to loom large. So how is Dubai, in spite of its strategic location, reimagining international trade? To share his take tonight on the show, I'm joined by a very special guest, Director of Marketing and Corporate Communications with Dubai Airport Free Zone Authority, Abdulaziz Al Hamadi. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you a lot for hosting me. Now, the Dubai Airport Free Zone Authority is, of course, home to over 1,600 companies, many of them multinational corporations. But how is DAVSA incentivizing small and medium businesses in particular to continue to set up shop in Dubai, particularly in the eye of a pandemic? So when it comes to DAVSA, since uh, almost 25 years, We've been hosting companies uh, from multiple industries. 45% of our uh, communities are actually multinational companies. However, the other part of it is actually small and medium enterprises. So the contribution of DAVSA's uh, economy comes from all the community members who are being, uh, who are using DAVSA as a hub for them to export and uh, import and manage their operation uh, regionally. At the same time, when we talk about uh, DAVSA, uh, DAVSA uh, offers uh, a lot of uh, entry options. So it's not only a one product or a one size that will fit all. Many small and medium enterprises looking to make their presence felt in Dubai may require some handholding initially. They may require handholding in the form of value-added services, plug-and-play platforms, or perhaps even end-to-end -end supply chain solutions. So what sort of inbuilt infrastructural amenities does DAVSA have on offer for such enterprises? Our business community, our free zone, is actually has everything that uh, an investor or an entrepreneur would need, whether, that, uh, whether it was a government support, and this is where we have our own dedicated government, government service centers who take care of all of, all of their requests, uh, others that are already in our uh, smart platform that we manage and follow up uh, with their requests, representing them with other uh, government bodies everywhere. Uh, you know, and th at the same time, the free zone accessibility is a bit more uh, advanced. Uh, we are adjacent to the Dubai uh, International Airport. It's e easy to come in and out to the zone. And uh, when it comes to the product, so our products, either you take a custom product, what we call standard lease, where they design and fit and do uh, their space the way that they want it, but also we have a low barrier and maybe a premium uh, packages uh, that will also uh, let them start uh, doing their business right away so they can just plug their laptops and start uh, working whether if it was from our smart office to uh, premium offices to premium plus offices depending on the size of the company that is coming in. But you know, this concept of supporting the uh, the SMEs and the startup has gone into a different level with DAVSA. So what we've also done, we have a lot of events that we've hosted with government agencies, with international organizations to uh, support their growth. So we always want to have this uh, kind of like relationship where we more understand the client more, understand the company's ambition more. And then this is where basically we have a specialized team who comes in and offer their hands and support them and represent them in the front of government bodies and government organizations, also with the private sector to support their growth. We have also Dubai Commercity, which is a, a dedicated uh, e-commerce uh, 
zone, the first of its kind actually globally, where it has all the ecosystem implemented within the zone itself. So it's now the concept of the free zone from Davza to Dubai Commercity, it's all about empowering growth and enabling growth, whether if it was an, uh, a startup or an SME or even MNCs who wants to expand their operation within the region. India and the UAE have enjoyed a long-standing legacy of bilateral trade. How do you anticipate that relationship will evolve going forward? And are there specific partnerships in the pipeline, perhaps, between Davza and the Indian subcontinent that you can tell us more about? Honestly speaking, India has always been our key market and it's one of our top trade partners over the past 25 years when it comes as DAFSA and 47% of our Asia region companies is actually represented by India. Our trips, our trade missions and delegations are actually mostly focused uh, in different uh, areas in India, whether if it was in Delhi to Mumbai to Bangalore. So we are targeting many sectors and many companies over there because we believe that with the history that the country that UAE have with India and with the bilateral trade hitting $60 billion uh, in the past uh, financial uh, year. This uh, intimate and this friendly relationship is always reflected between Emirati and Indian, whether if it was on the official side or in the friendly and personal level. I believe that Dubai's position as the world's premier re-export center for food products is undisputed. But what sort of inroads has it made in India's food and beverage ecosystem? In terms of uh, being the largest uh, re-export center, uh, to, today uh, Dubai uh, is a market that uh, that has the most uh, connected uh, flights and network to other region. I mean, within Dubai, you can reach to around 2.5 billion people within five hours. So the market size is a bit. Uh, huge and also with uh, Dubai ambition to be the capital of Islamic economy, supporting halal food uh, and uh, and so on. We see that the food and uh, beverage uh, businesses are actually uh, preferring to be uh, here in Dubai to be able to cover a wider uh, range of a market. But at the same time, we've, what we've done is, and because we've seen a lot of demand coming uh, from the FMB industry, we have built a Dubza industry Park, which is uh, strategically located near to uh, Dubai International Airport, where we provide cold storages and uh, other services that support companies in the uh, FMB industry to set up over there and start exporting and re-exporting. E-commerce activity has, of course, witnessed a dramatic surge in the wake of the coronavirus pandemic. And we've come to understand that a free trade zone dedicated exclusively to e-commerce activity is now under development in Dubai. Tell us more about Commercity as it's called and how local and global brands stand to benefit. If we go back now, during the pandemic and during the, uh, let's say, the quarantine and lockdown at some countries, we've seen that uh, people immediately, you know, switch to e-stores and ordering online. So the e-commerce industry did not actually suffer more than it grew you know uh, and it went very high and that's what big players like amazon and ebay and the others kept saying that auctioning and buying and trading through the e-commerce platform has grown. But, uh, you know, part of our diversification uh, plan as a free zone, we decided to build Dubai Commercity, which is an, attra in an attractive location for global and uh, regional headquarters for SMEs to start their e-commerce companies, especially with regional fulfillment and distribution centers and to be over there. So Dubai Commercity is located uh, next to Dubai Airport, the other side from uh, Dafza. And uh, what we are working on uh, right now, as we are building the ecosystem and Dubai Commercity being ready to, to be uh, delivered by the end of this year, uh, we have a lot of MNCs who are already registered and uh, they're already planning on their move into uh, Dubai Commercity. What makes Dubai Commercity really unique and different is actually as a free zone uh, concept, this is a free zone where it, it will allow companies and empower them to grow, not only through uh, an incentives that will uh, only impact their uh, setup uh, cost, 
but this goes beyond. At the same time, it provides advanced opportunities for global and regional manufacturers as well as distributors and global retailers to benefit from being in Dubai. Again, if we keep on talking about the market size, we are talking about 2.5 billion people uh, who are within five hour flight time. So the market is big and uh, already it is predicted and the forecast says that within 2022, it will grow in a double digit number. Commercity in terms of design, uh, it has it's divided into three clusters. We have the first cluster, which is the business uh, cluster that has the uh, office buildings area, some retail shops, some artistic feel into it to encourage the companies, their employees, you know, to walk around, to uh, uh, engage more, to socialize. And on the other hand, we have the logistic uh, cluster where it has dedicated warehousing and logistic units, especially made for e-commerce companies. And we have a social cluster, and it's my favorite cluster of them all. This is where basically we'll be showcasing, introducing uh, a new retail and and e-tail concepts. You know, this is where basically creative people will come together, work together and socialize and they can showcase their products and offer their services to support others. So thank you so much for your time and for your candid speak. We've got to go into a break, but on the other side, we bring you glimpses of our conversation with IIT Kanpur and its innovative approach to combating the deadly coronavirus pandemic. All that and more coming up, so don't go anywhere.